This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. It's now 6.53. Time to get you ready to take on your Tuesday in the Morning Sprint. To start, Mark has your forecast on a foggy beginning of the day. Flight attendants are joining forces for a global picket. City Charles has those details. But first, special election day is here. Let's get to Allison Martinez live with what you need to know before you turn in your special election ballot today. Today is election day and school bonds and levies make up the majority of the ticket. Spokane Public Schools is asking for a $200 million bond to improve buildings like Madison Elementary that you see behind me. They're also asking for a replacement levy to fund programs like after school activities. Turn in your ballot by 8 p.m. tonight and you can see unofficial election results starting at 8.15. Police shootings in one day. Officers killed one man and hospitalized another in two separate shootings yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, Spokane police say two officers fired at a man who was threatening himself and others with a knife. Police said the man held two people at knife point near Riverside and Howard before they arrived. Police tried to subdue him with tasers but ultimately shot him. Two officers fired four or five rounds at the man. He's hospitalized with serious injuries. Now, because this shooting involved Spokane police officers, the sheriff's office is the lead agency for the investigation. Hours earlier, SPD shot and killed a man in northeast Spokane while responding to calls from a woman who said that man was threatening her. The woman's adult son used cameras in the home to become the officer's eyes inside. When he saw it was safe, he left the house through the back door. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. The woman was taken to a nearby hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Police believe three officers shot at that man. They were all placed on administrative leave. The shooting's under investigation as well. Now on your screen is a map of Spokane County law enforcement shootings so far this year. Monday's police shootings mark the third and fourth law enforcement shootings since the start of the year. Now of the four shootings, three have been fatal. Comparing the number of officer shootings to last year shows a potentially concerning trend. In 2023, there were a total of six law enforcement involved shootings across all of Spokane County between all police departments and the Spokane County Sheriff's Office. Of those six, three were deadly. Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown released a statement about the shootings reading, a top priority for my administration is connecting those who are at risk with the resources they need before the situation escalates and threatens their safety, as well as the safety of community members and our officers. The mayor also says she is in steady communication with the interim police chief. As we look at our forecast in our first alert weather and that first alert weather app, valid year round. We're going to see, again, decreasing clouds, a little bit of afternoon sun coming in, but that patchy fog and dense in place is going to continue for the next several hours. We're sitting at 22 degrees into Cheney and Fairchild, around 30 into, uh, again, the I-90 corridor all the way north into Deer Park. Our forecast today, again, some sunshine this afternoon with a high of 38 expected. Prosecutors in the case against accused quadruple killer Brian Koberger think it's too early to grant the defense's request to move the trial out of Latah County. The case still ga gathers national and international attention. And because of that publicity, the defense attorney filed a motion last month asking for a change of venue. Prosecutors want the judge to set a trial date before holding a hearing on the change of venue. The state will seek the death penalty for Koberger if he's convicted. A man who shot two people, killing one inside the Richland Fred Meyer more than two years ago, will not go to prison. Monday, the judge accepted Aaron Kelly's plea of not guilty due to insanity. She made the decision even after hearing more than an hour of emotional statements from victims. The judge said she had to follow the law, saying that multiple mental health experts had told the court Kelly was not sane at the time of the crime. Kelly will be kept in state custody at a mental hospital potentially for the rest of his life. This morning, flight attendants across the world will be on the picket line in what's expected to be their largest ever collective action. Unions representing more than 100,000 flight attendants from airlines including American, Alaska, Frontier, Southwest, and United are demanding better pay, retirement benefits, and more flexible schedules. In a joint statement, they're vowing to fight corporate greed, saying in part, our time on the job must be compensated. We need flexibility and control of our lives. Coverage on today's protest will continue coming up next on Good Morning America. We have a major recall to tell you about involving a popular refrigerator brand. Electrolux is recalling more than 380,000 of its Frigidaire side-by-side -side refrigerators with slim ice buckets. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says the ice bucket assembly components can break, causing pieces of plastic to enter the buckets, which can pose a potential choking hazard. We'll have a final check of weather with Mark coming up right after the break.